Ballerina is a term that is often misunderstood. Many people think that ballerina describes any girl who dances on the tips of her toes in a ballet company. But it is a very precise term, yet almost indefinable. Sometimes in every great company, you discover in the court ballet some girls who have the same technique and sometimes a better technique than the ballerina, but they are not ballerina because they, they are lacking something which is very special and makes... Um, when, when we say a, a diva, you know, it's a word that becomes a little pretentious or a little funny sometimes. But the tra translation in Italian, it's a goddess. And the meaning is that someone who is touching the divinity. So, I mean, a diva, a ballerina, is someone which, who lives in a different planet. Every great dancer must have an individual approach to her dancing, plus the technique. I mean, it's no good just the dancer coming up and doing do it just with a brilliant technique because it's dead. You have to have a personal reaction to the classicism, which is your own. name is very commonly used and almost too much so but uh, a true ballerina is also a superb artist and a thoroughbred there's a training in there which makes a finer uh, born to it the way a breed of a special trained uh, athlete or animal there's a fineness of the body the technique and most of all the spirit which is different than anything else. Желательно, чтобы было все. Конечно, это трудно, но все хорошо делать трудно в любой профессии, не только в балете, абсолютно во всей профессии, во всех профессиях. И понимать свое дело, и уметь его любить, не просто себя, а любить свою профессию, это тоже важно очень. To become a ballerina means to bring into ideal balance the physical possibilities of your stubborn and perfect body is the possibilities of your soul, which, as you go through life, is continually renewing itself and constantly demanding new expression. does not exist outside the human body. If a dancer's body is incapable of feeling movement with emotion, with meaning, in order to convey to the audience the equivalent mood, a sense of life, then such a body has no place in ballet. For me, dancing means overlooking the formality of movement. It means spirituality. Otherwise, what good is it?
programs are about ballerinas and being a ballerina. What she does, how she works, and above all, what she is. A true ballerina is an artist with the ability to fill the space she moves in with her individuality. There are different kinds of ballerinas, just as there are different kinds of opera singers or actresses. It all depends on their culture, their training, but above all their personalities. First, there is the romantic ballerina. Early in the 19th century, the Italian ballerina Marie Taglioni was the first to rise on point creating the weightless image of the romantic ballerina. Now the great Italian ballerina of today, Carla Fracci, is famed for her romantic style. is one of the most authentic romantic ballets that survives. The sylph symbolizes the romantic idea of enticing but elusive love. Now a virtuoso ballerina. This is Cynthia Harvey of the American Ballet Theater. In solos like this from Paquita, the ballerina must excite the audience with her technique. It's a balletic showstopper. the ballerina as lyrical and dramatic actress. She has to tell a story and convey feeling and mood. You can express every human emotion in dance, and that I enjoy most. Classicism is the most difficult form of dance. The Grandpa Classic evokes the essence of the style required for classical ballet. Immaculate technique. This is Sylvie Guillem, a beautifully trained young French ballerina. She is perfect for this.
Now, if you have all the necessary inner qualities, what must you do to become a ballerina? An ideal body is a very good start, but it is very rare. The basic requirements are a small head on a very long neck. It's preferable to have a long legs and long arms to create the beautiful line that classical ballet requires. Ideally, you need beautifully arched feet, and these are rare indeed. Classical ballet is based on what we call turn out, which is the ability to rotate the legs out from the hips. Some have natural turn out, and they are lucky. For others, it will come from training. But even a perfect body and the best training are not enough. Class prepares our bodies every morning for the work of the day. We say, if you don't take class for two days, you notice it. If you don't take class for four days, everybody notices. Sentez le coup de pied. À fond la pointe. Hop. Doucement. Hop. Un, deux, trois, quatre. Relevez. The body never lies. The dance and every ballet lesson as well is like a confession. Each time I approach the bar, I begin a battle with my own body, which rebels like an untrained horse. There is a special pleasure and satisfaction in this, an almost masochistic pleasure in the body's rebellion. I must get it under control and make it respond. Class starts with the simplest exercises to warm up the engine slowly and then goes on for 90 minutes a day, every day, all our working lives. Ballerina will continue. In addition to class and rehearsal, dancers may need extra help to avoid strain. In America, it's very scientific. In New York, after taking class with American Ballet Theater at the Met, I often go up Broadway to the Anderson Kozakov studio. Here, I work with Brenda Anderson. Bend the knees, now roll out of it, roll down. Straighten the legs. This exercise releases the tension from my back. It stretches my spine while relaxing me after all the tension built up in studio or performance. Oh, this feels good here. Do it once in a while, then we'll do this one. Keep always steady, just work from the hip. This is not just to build up strength, but to stretch muscles and make them respond better. This is to help deal with stomach muscles, especially important to ballerinas who have had babies. It helps to get you back into shape again, as I found out myself. Alternately, strength building and relaxation helps to build your stamina. That's nice. Yeah, that was something creative. Yeah, creative. <laughs> Good. And straighten out, drop, down, up, and just in. That's enough. And if I need extra strength for a particular role, I go to see Marika Molnar at the Sports Injuries Center. 
She knows all about dancers as well as the athletes. Two, three. Pull down harder. Four, five, six, seven, seven. Pull down. Eight, nine, ten, and rest. What are you going to do now? We're going at a faster speed. Back and rest. God, he's strong. Back and rest. I can push. And rest. Well, I have you at a disadvantage. <laughs> Go, go. That particular machine is called a Cybex machine, and it's an isokinetic exercise so machine. Oh, and she sits in the chair and angles back about 110 degrees, which makes her quadriceps, so the front of her thigh, be more efficient, efficiently used with her knee bent. And then she brings it through the full range of motion and straightens her knee. And it's a specific exercise for the quadriceps on the way up and the hamstring muscles, which are in the back of your thigh on the way down. Rest, relax. When we were lying down on the table, basically I was working at stretching Natasha at, to the end of her range of motion. I've been watching this go up. It goes up. But you can see that the right leg is still stronger than the left. Look at that. It's much stronger. What are you doing to work the left leg a little harder. Up and down. This is special Up preparation for Swan Lake. And down. Stretch the arms over your She head. pushes my back so hard, and, and that down. helps me now build extra flexibility forward. and strength reach, in my upper reach, body. Reach. After this, oh, I feel as though oh, my God. arms could become wings and, and maybe make me fly. Don't push me so hard. You're strong, I thought. That's too easy. Okay. Do a few first. Warm up. I can feel and I can sense the tension in her tissues that tell me right before I have to stop. And then I stop. Even if she says I can go further, which she usually again, does, maybe. but it's a fine line. Try and stay at that open range at the very end there. Push back. Stretch. Push. And reach. Oh, stay there. Stay there. Stay there. That's great. Okay. And relax. Okay, let's move on to the other one now. A ballerina must take care of her body and every single detail of her appearance. She must have a sense of herself to be able to wear a costume as if she was born into it, whatever it is, a tutu or a romantic long dress. Like that, yes? If the costume doesn't appeal to her or doesn't fit like a second skin, that affects her performance. A ballerina must know what looks right on her body and what suits her. I'll show you again. We'll have another fitting and you can see it. And porn shoes complete our appearance and indeed support our performance. I've bought thousands of them from Bernard Kohler. The original uh, ballet shoes were a soft shoe, uh, which were just designed to protect the feet. And then they progressed from there to uh, various other refined instruments of torture, which were a very narrow last, uh, dating back to Pavlova's days, where the last compressed the bones of the foot into that sort of shape, so that all the strength was created by the bones being in the form of a tube. And from there, I'm afraid the dancers have rebelled a little bit and they require a bit more comfort, as well as more assistance from the shoe. That I feel comfortable with. Here. That one, no. No. And I don't understand the difference. Hmm? Can you see the difference? Yes, huh? let's check the measurement chart mm -hmm. first. That's good shoe. Yeah. And I like here, it's flat, you know, no bump. Here. That's right, yeah. It's nice. These are the tools of their trade. 
They rely on these for their art and their living and for their uh, whole way of life. And uh, the slightest difference in the shoe can make a tremendous amount of difference to your performance. One eighth of an inch lower on the vent. A lower? This is one eighth lower than that one. What did it mean slower? Shorter. Short. This one short. Shorter. Shorter than that one, yeah. Slightly. And what about the length? And the back. Two and three quarter. Okay. Two and three quarter. The back is the same. The same? Yeah. But why this bigger than that? Huh? Shorter term. Short. Maybe that's makes it. That's what's doing it. It's funny, but it's yeah. such a. It's just like that. It makes yeah, just a fraction. Different. Yeah, makes all the difference. Because oh. what that does, that gives uh. you a little bit more at the back there, yes. which makes your foot feel Absolutely. as though it's coming out. and ca coming comfortably. That's right. And here I feel like that. You know? That's it. Yeah, it makes your toes claw <laughs> claw together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm with you. In this program, you have already seen ballerinas from Russia, France, Italy, and America. Valerina is an international word. We all use the same universal language of Bali, but we speak with different accents. Our different accents start in the classroom. Let me take you first to my old classroom, in my beloved Vaganova school in Leningrad. On entering this school, you are immediately immersed in a special atmosphere, maybe a little old-fashioned, and at the same time, typically Russian atmosphere of life in the service of the arts. The Vaganova School of Bali emphasizes harmony, sense of movement, and the use of space. From our teachers, we learned much more than technique. To us, they were living examples of social grace and elegant simplicity and manners. It is very aristocratic. After all, Kirov dancers are descendants of the imperial Russian ballet. At the school, we learned different styles because we had important classes in national and historical dance. This solo from Raimonda is an example of a Hungarian stylized dance put by the great choreographer Mario Spitsipa into a classical variation for the ballerina. In this character, we have to use shoulders and torso, what we call Appleman. It makes it distinctive as a little paprika. But I mustn't forget that in Russia, as well as Leningrad, there is Moscow. For me, the supreme example of the Russian training is the Bolshoi ballerina, Maya Plisetskaya. class at the School of American Ballet in New York. The teacher is the Russian ballerina, Alexandra Danilova. 
She trained and danced in my native city, Leningrad. Stay, stay. Here she teaches young American girls who dream of joining one of the great ballet companies of New York. The School of American Ballet was created by George Balanchine. He also came from Leningrad. He came to America to make ballet based on the Russian technique he brought with him. And he made it faster and more energetic, just like New York itself. A former student of the school, now with American Ballet Theater, is Susan Jaffe. are the girls at the Royal Ballet School in London. The choreography of Frederick Ashton has a great influence on what is required from English dancers. Their classical technique needs to be touched by gentleness, restraint and good manners. Heel on the floor, heel on the floor. Girls fondue. And they must appear modest rather than flamboyant. And down and uh, out. Play on the midpoint, the whole thing. Back and uh, up. Side and uh, two. And up. Tombe and uh, up. Play. Left hip back, foot without the bar, girls. Don't drop the back. Don't drop the back on the double. And clear and up. Stretch the knee. Shoulders down. The English ballerina Antoinette Sibley trained at the Royal Ballet School from the age of 10. Here she is as Frederick Ashton's Cinderella. Now they are in Copenhagen, where the Royal Danish Ballet has preserved its tradition for many years. The founding father of the Danish Ballet was Auguste Bournonville. He trained in Paris. He brought back to Denmark the old French style. This style has great simplicity but uses very brilliant work for the legs and feet. The basic steps will be the same, but the Danes sometimes use them in a different way. The 
Gurnan Wilte Knig is kept alive in the company and school. Kirsten Ralev, who was a leading dancer with the Royal Danish Ballet, is the teacher. Basic steps to, to make a dancer is something you have to train. You have to train your body, your feet, your knee, your upper body. Everything has to be trained in a, in, in a special way every day. And that counts for Russian style, Italian style, French style, and Danish style. That's the same. That's what I mean. And uh, there, apart from the Russian, that, that's how, for instance, they use the arm. In the Russian style, if you open your arms and you you might do something like that with your hands, but we don't do that in Bonneville. We do it very simple, very plain, bring the arms down like that. That gives a little different softness of the style. It's not so, maybe not so sparkling, I don't know. To me it is. And especially the, the footwork in Bonneville is very sparkling, I find. Company class is light and lively. The dancers need to keep the arms simple because the footwork is so fast. And the Burnanville tradition finds its way into the repertoire of the company in the Royal Theatre in Copenhagen. In one of his ballets, Conservatoriate, Burnanville created a picture of his student days in Paris in the 1820s. This is Lise Jeppersen. I love to dance Bonneville. I love the style. It's um, somehow it's so um, human uh, because if you think about technique, you can forget about it. Of course, the technique have to be there, but uh, if you are thinking steps, you know you're looking very funny in your face. And uh, for me, uh, if you can see that, uh, I don't like to to watch it, and I don't like to dance it either. look very easy but they are really very hard it should be very soft but you have to have the control over your legs of course as in other things too and then you have to smile and say, oh it's nothing but it's really hard <laughs> I feel it's hard Now 
now we are in Paris, where Bournonville learned everything he knew about dancing. The French ballerinas have developed from the style he found there, as their dancing was influenced by the virtuoso style of the Italian school at the end of the last century. Today the French style is actually Franco-Italian, a very dazzling technique, very clear and brilliant in its manner, with lots of chic. At the School of the Paris Opera Ballet, you will hear the teacher, Christian Vossard, calling for more chic, plus de chic. Plus chic, plus d'épaulement, hein? la tête en bas, la tête en l'air, là, 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 beaucoup plus chic que ça. Hein? The class et ends là, with the reverence, un, a preparation et for taking the bows on stage. Là, It is also a mark of respect de to de our profession. Voilà. Et encore une fois. And now he is the French style at its most pure and elegant. Isabelle Guerin dances the variation from the Wedding Pas de Deux from Sleeping Beauty. It is a great asset for a ballerina to be versatile, particularly in contemporary ballets, to be able to express a wide range of dramatic moods. In a company like the Dance Fiat of Harlem, there is a very wide ranging repertoire. As Desdemona in a balletic version of Othello. As Lizzie Borden, who killed her parents with an axe in Agnes de Mille's version of the story Fall Revelation.
the next program, I will talk about the most important man in the ballerina's dancing life, her partner. I will finish now with another performance by that wonderful virtuoso ballerina, Sylvie Guillem, with her partner, Manuel Legri, dancing the Grand Pas Classique. Next on A&E, raging rivers, treacherous slopes, and snow surfing excitement await you in adventures that take you to the edge and beyond. <laughs> 